Welcome to Roy Models Daily Vlog. Here we are on the 2nd of March 2016. And today, I must admit, I've been continuing on with the actual Dreamliner. A uh, few little quirky things with this particular kit. One is the plastic is very soft. So there's a couple of things you have to be aware of. And one of them is obviously sink marks and stuff like that. And the big thing with this is, is it's a shell of two halves. So we've got massive seam lines all the way around this thing. And because it's going to be a very nice finish, very glossy and all the rest of it, it means that we can't accept anything less than perfection on especially this top seam. Purely because it will stand out like a sore thumb. And it's one of those things your eye is going to be drawn to. So we're taking a little bit more care on this. So we did the usual way. We used a little bit of the old... Uh, homebrew uh, filler right the way across the top and then we've sanded blended and taken care of that coat of primer and we talk about how primer really it's not just for making paint to stick to it's for seam checking and making sure everything looks good so if it looks good in primer it should look good uh, when you actually get into the painting stage and don't forget when you're doing this type of thing any imperfections you have at this stage are just gonna get worse as you make your way forward. So it's gotta be perfect at every single take. So this particular one, if it looks perfect with primer, there's no grittiness, no bits, lumps, bumps, you know, imperfections in it, then you know when the paint goes on, it's at best possible can be. But if you've got, like, to be honest on here, I've got a couple of little bits, which I think were bits in the actual, uh, in the Steinal res, or it's something in my airbrush that is pinged on here. If you was to leave those on there now, when it comes on with the paint, you're gonna see it through there and it's gonna get worse and exaggerated, so forth and so on. And by the time you get the lacquer coat on, it's gonna look horrible, okay? So it's just taking its time. But this one does suffer from sink marks and we show about it. Uh, we have the sink marks in these wings which we've taken care of and done those now. So that's no problem with those. But it is that thing of just making your way through this. It's very much like doing gloss work and all the rest of it because it has to be right at every single stage. So down here we put the doors on we closed it all up and we are now ready for our first fit okay which we put in actually it's a big old lump as you can see and i think doing it in flight will really look nice with this one the other thing we've done a little bit of work on is with these engines now the guy saw this on the live show last night we were speaking about it these are really worth the investment nothing wrong with the kit parts they're not exactly brilliant but you've got everything you would need but these are quite something else and they are beautiful uh, bits it goes together extremely well and it's just when you put this up to the kit parts these really are something else they're fantastically molded it just has that real solid look to them and everything else, and that's what you want on something like this, all right? So very nice with that one. So we're gonna be working on those. We've got loads of photo etch to put in those and go through it just like that. Uh, up today we've got for you the last part of the MiG-21, which is this guy just here. I must admit it's been a fantastic build and actually it should be another two parts still to go. But because I'm starting to get ahead of you, and I know some of you obviously want to see about the airliner and the Halifax and all these other builds we're getting on at the moment, and seeing as we've just like literally the final stages as well on the Terminator, I thought I'd actually double up. So actually what you've got is a one hour video for the final part. Instead of it being obviously this week and it would have been next week, I've decided to end it here so you've got both parts parts in one. So it's a one hour sort of special for the finish on this. We talk about obviously mounting it onto the stand. We put a pin on this acrylic rod, putting that in, all the final bits and pieces. We talk about obviously doing the weapons. So we talk about weathering them, how to mount them onto the model, very nice and clean and everything else like that. And we do little fixes on it, so like the IFF probes underneath it and things like that. We knocked a few off, so we replaced those and putting on the pit top tubes and generally bringing this one to an end and going through the final stages with it. And I have to say, I do wrap it on quite a lot normally but when it comes to the summing up on the videos i like to cover everything we've done in that video and explain my reasons why and what i've learned from it and everything else this one i get carried away i think it's 16 minutes of me just telling you about what we did with this build but there was lots of first with it to be honest we actually used the actual uh, vallejo uh, metal color again it's one of those things uh if you was just to pick it up and spray it i think you would have a few problems with it hopefully by picking up on what I've shown here and we, the way I to describe it as well. Thinning it is a must uh, and getting your air pressure right. It's quite selective on how you use it. Don't get me wrong, the AK uh, stuff, they're extreme metal. You can just seem to chuck it down at anything and it just goes down. This stuff is a lot more finicky. You have to be a little bit more with it, but I think it's a lot better than the AK stuff, if I'm honest, purely because this stuff is as hard as nails. The guys are all handling it again last night. Uh, everybody seems to have held in this thing and there's no mark of wear, tear, or gone through it anywhere. Yet with the extreme metals, it's very fragile. You have to be careful with it. Masking with this, again, no problem. We just mask the hell out of it and everything else. But it's been a very nice build 
and a learning curve. It's learning a new product, new ways of doing things. I learned about obviously using a hot air gun for bending acrylic rod where normally I bung it in the oven. So there's lots of firsts on this particular one and I've come away learning a lot from the model. I try and do something where it's a learning curve for me and I can show you guys, but this particular one, we come away with quite a few firsts on this one. So I really have enjoyed doing it. So as you said, I know it's a one hour, you could obviously split it up yourself and do you know, half hour today, half hour tomorrow and all the rest of it. But that way I can get on with part one, we'll obviously be up next Wednesday, uh, down here on the airliner and everything else like that. And then obviously the Halifax is coming along very quickly behind it. Uh, thank you for all your great questions and all the feedback we had on last night's live show. It's nice to do them with the guys. A big thank you to Adam for demoing for us. Who knew? Uh, but he actually gets the pigments out and he goes through it. Yes, the video quality isn't brilliant, but we're on a webcam in a studio. When you're like three feet from it, it's no problem at all. But when you're trying to get an entire room, a webcam isn't the best for it. And to be honest, the audio, yes, I know it's a little bit finicky. That's because Adam and the lads are all sound crystal clear. I don't because I'm behind the mic because I didn't have my mic on. Uh, normally we run a couple of microphones, but I've got to turn mine on. So that's why I'm a little bit muffled at some points. But be sure next time, next month, we will get it sorted. And I'll have all the mics running. Uh, so we should all be nice and loud and proud and clear and everything else like that. If you enjoyed seeing Adam doing his bits and pieces, uh, Ron, as you know, was recording it on his phone. Hopefully he'll get that uploaded onto the internet and I'll get links over to his so you can see all about it direct like that. But what I might do is get another webcam and we'll have either on a long lead or a Wi-Fi built one and then we can just sit it down and just click with it and just go through the motions of it like that so you can see so you know we're trying to keep it as interactive and fun and don't forget this is what it's all supposed to be it's supposed to be a light-hearted look at the hobby so that's definitely why we have a few fun jokes at everyone's expense normally uh normally mine uh, and everything else like that but it's been a lot of fun so there we go, that's it for today. Uh, I've got some kit reviews coming up for you, hopefully, if they come in, fingers crossed, I haven't had a dispatch, but hopefully the Shackletons will be back in because we've sold the ones we had here, um, and I was hoping to do a review on one, but because they've all gone out straight away, I have ordered another load, which should be in before the end of the week, fingers crossed. If not, I've got some more great reviews, some various bits and pieces I want to show you over the next few weeks as well, so I could always pull those forward uh, for this week and everything else like that. So there we go, don't forget, go and check out the MIG, and I'll catch you all tomorrow.